Hello and welcome to day three of the 40-day prayer challenge, Mill Creek the Church of God. I'm going to start by going back a little bit. Uh, as I mentioned on day one of the challenge, this particular 40-day prayer challenge uh, was put forth to us by our state administrative bishop and we were challenged to take it up as a congregation and we are doing that at Mill Creek Church of God and we are doing it through these particular videos. Uh, the book that it is based out of is Draw the Circle, the 40-Day Prayer Challenge by Mark Batterson. But I wanted to go back and relate a little bit about exactly what Draw the Circle is and the story that he relates um, as to why the, the title and what it's about. Uh, it is a 40-day prayer challenge, but it is not necessarily, it doesn't seem uh, to change the things outside of you, but rather the, to change the things inside of you. And I, I feel like day three is an, a good day to address that, and you'll see as we get into day three. But in the introduction to the book, he relates a story of a gentleman named Rodney Gypsy Smith, who never received a formal education, uh, yet he was able to lecture at Harvard. And Gypsy, I'm just going to read a, a paragraph uh, actually two paragraphs out of here. So Gypsy revealed his secret uh, to a delegation of revival seekers who sought an audience with him. They wanted to know how they could make a difference with their lives the way he had with his. His answer was simple yet profound, as timely and timeless now as it was a hundred years ago. He gave them this advice. Go home, lock yourself in your room, kneel down in the middle of the floor, and with a piece of chalk, draw a circle around yourself. There, on your knees, pray fervently and brokenly that God would start a revival within that chalk circle. So the challenge of this, uh, as we reach day three, is to start a revival within yourself. Uh, we talked day one about getting ready. And part of getting ready, a huge part of getting ready, is prayer. Uh, day two yesterday was that you are established by God and we need to understand the greatness of God and his ability uh, to order our steps and to do things within our lives and Batterson had related uh, the science and the mathematics behind how we travel approximately one and a half million miles through space every day and God is able to keep that all in control and certainly he can control our lives. Today, day three of the prayer challenge is simply titled Amazing Things. And the scripture for today is Joshua 3, 5. And it says, Sanctify yourselves or consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Consecration or uh, sanctification simply means, uh, ultimately, as Batterson puts, that we no longer call the shots. It's separating yourself. Um, it, it is setting yourself apart. It is following after God. And not only does it mean that we no longer call the shots, Batterson puts one of the best definitions for sanctification or cons consecration that I've seen into print, and it is simply a death to self. Now, I do want to share why that is so important and Batterson words it just so beautifully in chapter 3. He said, The Son of God set the standard. Jesus gave all of himself at Calvary, and he expects nothing less in return. If Jesus hung on the cross, we can certainly carry our cross. His death demands our lives. That is a uh, sobering and sombering thought that Jesus did give absolutely everything for us and we certainly need to be able to give everything to him. But make no mistake, one of the quotes that Batterson has in here uh, that I'm going to share with you is, Consecration is a process of surrender that never ends, and prayer is the catalyst. The challenge today, as we get ready by making that dedicated time to pray each day, uh, certainly we need to pray throughout the day, part of getting ready. Uh, he shared the verse where uh, Cornelius prayed always, or he prayed regularly. 
we need to pray regularly, but he reiterates in this chapter the necessity uh, to be able to have a dedicated time of day uh, to prayer. Now certainly we need to pray outside of that. Sometimes prayer is just a casual conversation between us and God. Sometimes it is a deep uh, and, and fervent intercession. He kind of recounts that through this chapter. Uh, but we also need, outside of those times throughout the day that we pray, we need a dedicated time of day uh, that we spend alone with the Lord in prayer. As we come to the close today and, and we get ready to, to join together in prayer for just a moment, uh, Batterson ends with this particular quote. He says, if we give more of ourselves to God, God will give more of himself to us. And today, as we close out day three and as we take a moment uh, to pray, let that be our prayer today, that we can simply uh, provide more of ourselves to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you today that we are able to, to join together even by video, Lord, to understand what you are able to do. Lord, that you can do the absolute amazing within our lives if we will only surrender ourselves to you to the point to where we no longer call the shots, to where we no longer control our own selves, but Lord, rather we concede that control to you. Lord, I pray that as we join together, that myself and each one that may come across and join in this prayer, Lord, that you would help us to die to self and live our lives entirely and fully surrendered to you and to your will. And Lord, as we do that and as we consistently and regularly pray, Lord, help us to see that you are in control and that through your control and your sovereignty and your power, Lord, that we're not doing it for the amazing things to happen, but we're simply doing it because you're amazing. And we know that through that, God, that things will certainly change within our lives and revival will start first within us so that it can spread to others. Lord, we thank you today. We give you the praise, glory, and honor for all things. In Jesus' name, amen.